Hi guys, welcome to Extreme Overclocking YOLO. If you haven't already, maybe watch the other video first, but I've done the same, essentially what's the same kit in an RGB kit called Warhook. Um, but I noticed the PCB layout was a little bit different. So I've, what I did is basically the overclock I su sustained on the other kit, kit, two sticks, because none of them are kits, they're all singular sticks. So <clears throat> when I put the other two together, <clears throat> Got to 4,000 at uh, 19, 21, 21, 42, 2T command rate. And so I thought I'll just pop these in and see if they'll just do it straight off the bat. Now I haven't tested them, haven't seen if they'll, but the other ones were stable, stable, 24 seven at that. 1.35 volts, 1.35 IO and 1.3 SA. Anyway, same volts on this, uh, same bio setting, same everything, just change the sticks out. So um, putting them in, I've noticed the, um, the auto training of the other timings is very much the same um, except as a point of note that the initial RTLs um, are, are the same are the 74s but on the other it trained up uh, 73 73 14 13 as the uh, RTLs and IOLs. Now to be honest with you I've only uh, ever seen uh, the actual RTL uh, lower than the initial RTL with board auto training uh, at all actually and here I'm sitting there looking at uh, 75 75 15 15 when 74 is the initial RTL so it's training outside the RTL uh, the um, uh, initial initial RTL so that's something I haven't seen um, If anyone wants to comment there and, and on that, I mean that might be something that I see. I didn't really play with the initial DDR4 like micro and stuff. Edo is what I played with first, so I haven't really played with sort of the lesser. I played with them a bit, but got bored with them pretty quickly, uh, and gone on onto other sticks. Maybe this is something that happened commonly in early DDR4. I don't know, um, but I wouldn't have thought so. Anyway, any comments would be welcomed. Um, it may just be the difference between the two kit, uh, sticks, lots of sticks, pairs of sticks, uh, may just be the, uh, the way it trained up. I, I, I don't know whether the PCB layout's having something to do with that. Uh, I'll see if they'll go, I'll test this first and then I'll, I'll see if they'll go higher, I guess. Sorry in sequence, I really should add this in as well. I showed it on the other sticks much for much just getting the same answers uh the same question marks are there uh the same part numbers um interesting they're the same part number because they're not the same pcb layout or well, not layout but implementation so it can't be the same part number in my eyes um unless there's a bit of dodgy dodgy going on maybe I don't know but someone can happily correct me and say that the part number there should relate to the ICs only without the PCB layout um, happy to be corrected but that's what I would have thought okay so we'll move on okay so <clears throat> where the other sticks wouldn't um, really boot or play nice early stable going into windows um, uh, by bumping voltages or anything like that at 4133 same timings this kit would boot run in basic windows sort of tasks and whatnot but um, crash out and Dy Dykstra part of uh, actually before Dykstra on, on um, Geekbench 3 so I bumped some voltages 1.25 got 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 to Dijkstra and then crashed. Uh, didn't crash the computer like it did first on. Just, just shut down uh, Geekbench 3. Oh, and okay, all right. Played with it a bit more. A few other voltages, but in 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 stories, um, uh, set a bit of SA voltage helped it at first. Um, and then I've bumped those even further. So I've ended up at 1.45 on the VDIM. 1. Um, uh, 375 on each of the IO and SA. Um, IO effectively reporting as 1.39-ish, uh, 1.376 for SA uh, in, in uh, hardware, hardware info. 
So, um, I thought, okay, well, maybe it doesn't like the 133 strap for the memory. So I've changed it to the 100 strap and put it at 4100 megahertz. And I'm about to test that. Might as well run that in front of you. And see see if it actually gets through to uh, to pass Dijkstra or not. Shah will crash it out early. Didn't do that. Who <whistles> are uh, Dijkstra? Here we go. Is he just going to say nothing? Stop. No, made it through Dijkstra. So maybe it's the actual 33 megahertz, or maybe it's the strap that it's on. It didn't train the timings any differently from how it was at... Four, no, yeah, it is in between for 4000 and 4133 quite well. I mean, in the middle of. Uh, TRFC is in the middle of. RDs on the right went up by one instead of two. T4 and TRTP adjusted slightly, so don't know how efficient that memory is at that. Yeah, okay, well it's in the range of where I would expect it to be for the efficiency. It's like not like it's not like that strap dropped off in efficiency or anything like that, and it can be. Alright, well I might leave those voltages where they are and see if it'll handle. Yeah, I'll just see if it'll handle like before. You know, a couple of hours of real, real life loading up the majority of the RAM type uh, gaming, getting the heat up and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Red Dead or something like that, or Baldur's Gate early release. Just, just see if it survives this for a bit. In which case it'll have been better than the other sticks before, but admittedly I didn't try locking down the strap on those. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, just a small note I wanted to add in there, so I'm doing a little recording for it, but here's where I'm talking. So there's your 100 strap. Your, um, if that was on the 133 strap, uh, then that would be 1 to, one to 31, uh, which would be evidenced in, yeah, it was 1 to 30 at 4,000 megahertz, so um, that should be evident early on. Okay, so it didn't stay stable for even a 3D Mark Time Spy run after running Geek and 32M uh, Python. So when it got to the CPU memory part of the 3D Mark test, it crashed. Back to 4000, down with the voltages again to 1.35, 1.35 IO as well, and SA 1.30. Um, evidenced over here, slightly over volting the IO, and um, yeah, ran, ran right for the SA. So, uh, the D ran for 1.343, 1.35. 1 so, yeah, almost, almost identical. Um, despite having slightly different whatever help whatever's going on underneath the bonnets there you know the PCB is being slightly different so uh, but yeah the uh, non RGB kit um, being a little bit more malleable at the top end there but just whatever would be required I went up to 1.5 uh, uh, VDIM 1.4 1.4 for the other two so <coughs> um, but yeah, interesting that it's uh, RTLs are higher than initial. Uh, but yeah, just differences between them. Uh, oh, should I pull the heat spreaders off? I mean, I could just sell these off and, and get on with life. Do I pull them apart and make them almost unsellable? And uh, so it's my find my curiosity. I'm not sure that it's worth doing for the ICs. You'll know. You'll know soon. Okay, so I did stop at that last section of that vid. I didn't go to push it any further than that. And to be honest with you, I'm still undecided as to whether to pull, it, pull these heat spreaders off. Economy uh, versus curiosity. I'm dying to look, but 
I won't sell them. I've just I've got a I mean, I've got an X299 and I've got an X99 system here. Perfect for the X99, that 32, uh, 32 C16. I reckon that'd be great. So I've got an XOC Champion with a 6800K in it. I think they'll go in there. Which means that they probably will get the heat springs taken off them. But just not yet. So I will st stay tuned on the channel because if I do it, it'll probably still be sooner than later. Um, and I'll probably just whack. I've got about... 20 aluminium EK heat spreaders for uh, water cooling or liquid nitrogen there. So I'll probably just whack a couple of those on there um, after I take the uh, original heat spreaders off. Yeah. I'm torn to, tor I was torn between it. I wanted to sort of put it into this vid and show it at the, as a completion, but I'm not gonna. So either I'll come back and update <coughs> with text over the top or text in the description these vids or I'll do a separate vid so um, keep your eyes open you might want to click that subscribe thing now maybe even have that bell thing going which I don't necessarily think you need annoying you but just to catch that vid maybe anyway extreme overclocking yobbo signing out for this one it was a whole lot of waffle about nothing really wasn't it I got to the same clocks as the other one I suppose immediately but didn't really get any further probably to be expected. Signing out, I'm Dink if you're Dink.